Okay, so to get the elephant out of the room, yes, I am still on break and I will be until roughly the end of January, but I figured I would leave you guys with one more video just to cap off 2022, especially because I have time to. So today I'm going to be talking about my top 20 favourite matchups just in general of all time. Many of these have a lot of connections, many of these don't, uh, but I will try and explain myself as I go along. Also, all the thumbnails made in this video may either be made by me or my good friend Epion, shout out to him. And yeah, let's get on with some honourable mentions. Uh, Firstly, Bowser vs Eggman. Def I debated myself with this if this should be number 20, but kind of fell just short, to be honest, probably due to the lack of connections. Uh, Son Goku vs Saint Seiya vs Sailor Moon, I really like uh, as like a three-way matchup, but I have no connection to Saint Seiya or Sailor Moon, so I don't really, you know... I'm not as invested with that. Toru vs Makima will definitely be in this list once I get to Jojo Part 8, but uh, until then I just don't really have a connection with Toru. Uh, Goku Black vs Reverse Flash is another one I just really like, even if it's a massive stomp. Jojo Kujo vs Waitodo is from Jujutsu Kaisen is another big matchup I really like. I love the two characters and it's just generally a good matchup, but I just don't like it as much as the ones in the list. That goes for Toph vs Guillaume as well, by the way. Same thing there. Novel Dio vs Omega Flurry has such a specific connection that I love it a lot, but it's not really enough to carry it. Chara vs Amori would be on the list, but I do already have a Chara matchup on this list, which, by the way, I'm only going to limit myself to one matchup per character because otherwise half the list could just be one character versus a ton of others, which just wouldn't be as interesting. Dio vs Muzan has fallen off for me a little bit, but I still do really like it. Uh, Yuji Tadori vs Denji would be on the list, but there are a few things holding it back from me, uh, which I'll explain in a different video. Luke Skywalker versus Invincible is criminally underrated, but and, and, like, I'm not as big a Star Wars fan as I used to be, and I, it's just not vibing with me as much as any of the other matchups. Reagan versus King or versus Hercule, or you know, any sort of combination of them are all good. It's just I, I, it's hard for me to compare that to other matchups that I like a lot more that's not just ironic enjoyment. Power versus Foo Fighters versus uh, Toga are both really good for me, but again, I've got other power matchups. Joseph Joestar versus Johnny Cage would definitely be next in line of all these matchups. It has kind of fallen off for me due to the lack of connections, but I still find it quite funny. Uh, Akaza versus Wamu I also really like, but it has also kind of fallen off for me, especially because the debate is very boring. And yeah, let's go on with my top 20 favourite matchups. Now for number 20, I technically have already broken the one rule I set for myself, but it's a little bit complicated because this matchup is basically a 3 versus 3, being Kid Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura versus Itadori, Fushigiro and Nobara. Uh, basically the connections are there are you know, just two groups of three anime characters involving the main characters, including two guys and one girl, with a white haired like lazy mentor with cool eyes. The main character of the group has a literal demon side of him, the girl helps to ground the series and the other guy is from a cool clan, and is very serious when contrasting the rest of the group, and it generally vibes with me a lot, however I do use one of these characters later on in the video, so if you don't think this counts, then well, Android 17 and 18 versus Peter and Steven. The connections are there are two counterpart characters who are originally human and live normal lives, however were turned into robotic creatures with power over others. Despite being both coded for a specific purpose, they would both eventually go against this and end up in the side of good. They also both end up joining the group of main characters in the end in order to save the multiverse. They also have a pretty mundane and normal jobs, despite their power. Also, this matchup is actually really debatable, uh, go figure. So yeah, you could probably switch either of these out. Uh, number 19. Nami versus Green. Now, I only have just started reading One Piece, so this matchup could get even better for me over time or be ruined, but it's on this list for now because I really like it. The connections are they were both kidnapped at a young age and became, you know, thieves turned heroines from a long running manga series. Despite meeting the naive male character at the start and stealing from him, they both grow to be good friends, and after a character arc would go on to renounce their stealing ways. They basically have the exact same origin story, and I'm all for it. The only thing is, I'd more familiar of manga green than I am, you know, video game green, so I don't know if that changes anything at all. Number 18. 
Nasal versus Psychor. The connections for this are pretty obvious. They're incredibly famous characters from popular fan-made works based off of pre-existing series. Uh, they also both became famous among the internet because of that. They're both cruel and arrogant combating the main casts from their series when they appear completely destroying them. Their power was so great they needed to be you know, stopped with a new fan-made power-up, being Shaddock in Super Saiyan 5. And I will be covering this matchup later on like, next year as well, so stay tuned for that. Number 17, Makima vs Alucard. Now, as I said earlier, this will probably switch out for Toru when I read Jojo Part 8, but for now, this is my favourite Makima matchup. Uh, they're both uh, powerful demonic demons, being vampires and devils, who are part of an organisation that eliminates said demons. Uh, they both took a human recently turned vampire devil man under their supposed death uh, to work for them, uh, both of whom would then try their best to remain loyal to them. Both Alucard and Makima have a reputation to be dangerously powerful to the point where they're actually hunted down by deadly groups specifically founded to kill them. Uh, they're also known to be extremely difficult to kill due to being able to replace their death with a new life, with Alucard's millions of souls and, Alu and Makima being able to transfer the damage that she takes to a random Japanese citizen. Uh, they also both release all of these lives as an army to aid themselves in the final battle, uh, though are eventually killed at one point. Uh, they would also both come back to life in different ways, Alucard returning after 30 years of killing all the souls within him, and Makima being resurrected. Generally, I really like it, I think it's criminally underrated, and again, this is another one I will be covering next year. Number 16, Lord Boros vs Battle Beast. The connections are pretty simple. They are villains from their respective series who are seen as gods amongst the cosmos because of their history and are some of the strongest warriors in the galaxy. They both conquer multiple planets in order to try and find a worthy opponent and said opponent who is in a world of heroes. They both don't take pleasure in fighting foes clearly under them and they also just both want a worthy battle of someone who's on par with them. And I, it vibes a lot with me as well. I just really like it. Number 15, Shozuzuki versus Trish Una. Uh, this one's pretty simple as well. There are two anime characters who started out with unclear alignments as to if they were good or evil, who are also children of the main antagonist who runs an evil organisation. This this main antagonist would give out powers to people within their group and have a big deal of hiding their identity. They would both go down to loathe their parents and try and taking them down by joining the main cast, which would lead to them fighting against their parents. Again, I, I just think it really works. You could swap out Sho or Trish for Silver from Pokemon, but I, I don't know, I just like Sho versus Trish more, to be honest. Next is Darth Vader versus Obito Uchiha. Uh, if you asked me this like a few weeks ago or like a couple months ago, this would probably be up higher on the list, but it has kind of fallen off for me, but I still do really like it. The connections are there were once great heroes who fought for good only to be betray betrayed by their best friends, which caused them uh, to become evil and also follow new evil masters. Both would turn their back and or turn back into a hero again just before their death when they encounter the new young heroes of the new generation who were supposedly be able to bring peace to the world. They both also use masks to hide their identity. They have very similar backstories. I just really like this matchup too, because of two of my favourite villains in fiction as well. Uh, next is Aki versus Megumi. Now, this is what I was meaning by there's a character, you know, from the 20th spot that's also in this one, too. Uh, two male dark haired and manga characters who are part of a group of three involving the main character as a demon inside of them and a very loud mouthed girl. They're also both the serious ones in the group and have tragic backstories involving their families. They're also both part of an organization which hunts cursed spirits slash devils, which share connections with each other, and they both fight with dogs made up of cursed energy devils, which just, yeah, it vibes a lot with me. I think it's a stop, although I could maybe just completely wrong. Number 12. Yeah, you, you saw number 20. I think this was going to be quite obvious. It's Gojo versus Kakashi. Uh, they are two male anime characters with white hair who teach people. They both come from a bloodline of notable people but are undoubtedly the strongest of said bloodline. They are known for teaching the main three characters, the main character having a demon side of him, a loudmouth female character, and another guy from a cool clan. Most of Gojo and Kakashi's powers come from their unique and overpowered eyes, and they're known across the world for their power. They're also the best two husbandos, and I'm not debating anyone on that. 
Number 11, Aaron Yeager versus Tanjiro Kamado. They are both the male uh, main protagonists of an anime series who had their entire family slaughtered by an inhuman species while they were out collecting something as if it was any normal day. The inhuman species, being demons and titans, seek to wipe out humanity and can regenerate unless their head is cut off. Upon having their families destroyed, they both pledge to wipe out every single titan and demon, besides Nezuko. Uh, and were accompanied by a dark-haired powerful girl and a coward blonde guy who would eventually end up to overcome his coward as the series goes on. Both join ranks specifically catered to killing uh, demons and uh, titans. Uh, both characters would also be put on trial due to their relations with demon demons and titans. Both attempted to be executed, however were saved at the last minute by an elderly figure. Both would end up to become the very thing they swore to destroy and succeeded in wiping out the titans and demons this way, however parallel in their endings. Spoilers for Attack on Titan and Demon Slayer by the way. Uh, Tanjiro would end up overcoming the demon power, wiping out the demons for good, and ends up with a happily ever uh, uh, ending, for the most part, being able to start a family and all that. Uh, meanwhile, Eren becomes a villain and ends up killing, or end up being killed by his closest friends in order to take out the titans for good, although I guess you could argue this is a bittersweet ending as well. Uh, they also both have regeneration, have some level of precognition and levels of naivety, with Eren being very headstrong and Tanjiro being naive. They're also both swordsmen who struggle with their weapons at first, and their powers are related to their ancestors. Again, criminally underrated matchup, I very much love this as well. Number 10. Power versus Nezuko. The connections are as such, there are two female anime manga characters who fight alongside humans despite being monsters against said monsters. They both fight alongside a male main character who they share a deep close bond with. There's also the constant fear of them going berserk and out of control due to their demon slash devil nature, which will result in the organisation that they work for hunting down and killing them. Uh, they, contra they contrast with Nezuko being completely silent and Power being an arrogant loudmouth. They're both extremely brutal when they go all out in their fights and have attacked the main character at least once before and their main, with their main goals now being able to protect someone close to them. Well, they both have many abilities, one of the most common ones that they use and are known for is their ability to manipulate blood, which they use to fight and heal people respectively. Their horns also grow depending on what happens in the fight, Nezuko getting angry and Power drinking too much blood. Again, there is Nezuko versus Alphonse and, you know, all the other Power matchups, but I've not watched Full Metal Alchemist, so I have no personal connection to that, so this is currently my favourite matchup for the two. Number 9. The Crimson Mask Saiyan vs Heaven Ascension Dio. The connections are there are two main anime villains who see themselves as gods and died fighting the main characters in their main timelines, yet in this timeline they win and kill the main characters and go across the multiverse trying to kill more main characters, and both come from video games and are super OP compared to their anime counterparts. They both use sacred, art sacred artifacts to corrupt people to help them fight for them and have connections to masks in some way with D Dio originally getting his powers through the stone mask and the crimson mask saying this is basically just infinity ultron versus heaven ascension deal but better in my opinion although i think it's probably less debatable maybe number eight to reach suzuki versus all for one this was for the longest time my most like pop like my really favorite matchup but this has kind of fallen off for me a little bit over time there are two suited anime villains who take powers from others, willing to have the abilities to give power to others as well. Both of them take on the most powerful character from each of their own verse, and lead evil organisations where they try to take down the government. They also contrast with Tarichiro having a biological son who hates him, and all for one having Shigaraki who sees him as a father despite not being a biological relative. Number 7. Kawaki vs Shoto Todoroki. They are two male uh, main anime characters, part of uh, a major group of small kids. Both had an abusive father who intentionally gave birth to them slash experimented on them in order for them to get strong enough. Both of them seem really edgy at first, and they are to some extent, however are much kinder at heart than you might expect. When Kawaki uses karma, a red mark goes over his left eye, and that's where Shoto Todoroki has, 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 has his iconic uh, red scar. Uh, which also both show the abuse that they went through under their fathers. They also both contrast with Shoto's dad wanting to make him stronger and to surpass himself and become the strongest hero, only to go through arcs where he becomes a good parent and amends his mistakes. Meanwhile, Jigen wanted Kawaki to become strong for his own personal gain, and Jigen never became a good father and ended up dying trying to take control over Kawaki. 
Gwaki and Shoto are both mentored and taught by the strongest characters in the verse, who, despite being the strongest, aren't at their primes with All Might and Naruto. Uh, they both also have two very different hair colours each at the same time. They also, they also both use red coloured fire attacks as well and eventually go on to embrace their powers that their fathers gave them despite absolutely loathing them to begin with. They also come to conflict with their brothers due to their actions with their father. This is, this is one of my favourite matchups. The only thing that annoys me is that the recent Boruto chapters make it a god stomp for Kawaki which uh, that, that just sucks, but I mean, it is what it is. Number six, Rock Lee versus Izuku Midoriya. Now, many people watching this do just think this as bad All Might versus Might Guy, but honestly, I think that All Might versus Might Guy is bad Rock Lee versus Izuku Midoriya. Uh, the connectors are as such there are two uh, anime heroes who started off with no talent and no powers, who got super OP from their super flamboyant and mighty father like figures, which makes them incredibly powerful. However, it does break down their body when they use it and does take a lot of hard work to acquire the levels of power that they need to actually, you know, make the power efficient. They also both achieve lower levels of said powers compared to their mentors and end up actually surpassing them in the end. They also will specialise for kicks for attacks as well. This is better than Rock Lee versus Sanji in my opinion. They also both wear the colour green. You know, it's, it's a big one. It's the Deku versus God connection, so it's also just better than that one as well. And yeah, I just think it's better than Mike Guy versus All Might. Number 5. Fubuki vs Ritsu Kageyama. They are two psychic espers who are siblings to other very powerful psychics. Both were made by the same author despite coming from different series, and both of their siblings are compared a lot. Due to being weaker than their siblings, they ended up developing power complexes where they felt as though they had to show that they were better than others, which resulted in them involving themselves with gangs. Upon changing their ways after something the OP main character did, they ended up becoming stronger and proved vital in the final battles. This is an other matchup people will just think is like bad uh, Kageyama or Mob versus Tatsumaki, but again, I think this is better Mob versus Tatsumaki, if anything, due to actually having connections. Number four, Chara versus Henry Miller. They are the two main villains of RPG style games with some level of dark humor to them. They both look exactly the same as the main character, just with palace swaps. They're also both master manipulators when they were alive, manipulating an innocent guy in order to make them closer to them. Uh, they both end up dying and becoming evil spirits. Within these two games, there are good and bad endings depending on what you do. And the bad ending, everyone dies, and the player ends up getting possessed by Henry and Chara, killing both Asriel and Dave. Uh, and they continue their murderous rampage after they get possessed. Uh, after saying their iconic lines, since when were you the one in control, lad, I always come back. There's also the connection with souls, little by little leaking into the world again as the player kills more and more people, and both are aware of different timelines and what goes on within said timelines. It's also a fun comparison because Henry was mostly a child murderer, while Chara is literally a child murderer. I, yeah, I'm also doing this matchup next year as well, it's actually really debatable and it, I think it's really good. Number 3. Sonja and Majuka vs Tamuyo and Yoshiro. Uh, basically, they're the exact same characters within their respective worlds. Tamuyo and Majuka are both kind demons who help or seek to help humans compared to other demons who are either much more feral and lower classed uh, or just outright want to kill and eat demon or people. Uh, these demons eat people, unlike Tamuyo and Majuka. Uh, the two, two of them provide healing for the human characters uh, who are instrumental also in the final fight. Uh, Yoshiro and Sonja are both the two male main demons who are much more abrasive compared to their female companions who also help demons to, and are also physically the stronger of the couple. They both contrast however as Yoshiro, while aggressive, does not want to eat humans while Sonju actively still wants to hunt humans but chooses not to have respect for the person to save them being Majuka. Majuka and Tamuyo also have connections to the big, big like the main bad as well. Uh, and generally this matchup is very good, also very debatable as well, maybe. Number two, Susie versus Bakugo. This, this matchup definitely has the least amount of connections out of any of them on this list, which might make it a bit confusing as to why this is so high up, but it's probably due to my favouritism for these two characters. They're basically two anti-hero-esque bully characters who meet the main character at a school, and while at first he threatened them with death, eventually grew to become the, be the main character's best friend and helped them save the world on through undergoing arcs. 
generally I think this matchup's really good, and while I did think this was a stomp a while ago, I actually, after looking into it, know it's actually quite debatable to be fair. Number one, my all-time favourite matchup. Keiji Mogami versus Ryoman Sukuna. Uh, firstly, they are two of my favourite villains of all time, if not my favourite villains. Uh, they are two main anime uh, male characters who long ago were the strongest humans within their series. Upon their death, they became evil spirits, which granted them regenerative powers and invisibility to the normal person. Uh, they both get so strong that by the time the main character meets them, they are much stronger than the main character despite being the villain. They both possess people, including the main character, and have their own mental worlds inside of their minds, which they're basically the gods of. They also beat the shit out of people who are anyone who get in their way, including people who are their own kind and are the most powerful villain, despite not necessarily being the main one. The character dynamic here is also really interesting, as Mogami would see Sukuna as nothing but just another evil spirit for him to absorb, and Sukuna would see Mogami as beneath him due to him being the king of curses. They both end up growing to hate each other during the fight as well, you could argue that Sukuna would grow respect for Mogami due to his power, but they would eventually end up hating each other with Mogami out of sheer frustration due to Sukuna being stronger than any of anyone else he's seen before, and Sukuna, you know, just being angry with Mogami, thinking he's better than him. Uh, and also just, I guess, Sukuna can actually be taken back when he destroys Mogami's vessel, for example. And... Yeah, those are all of my favourite matchups. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.